Welcome to the AR Performance Squash Advantage, hosted by me, Ahad Braza, a former PSA Touring Pro turned elite performance mentor and coach. I break down tactics, technique, fitness, and mindset by analyzing players from the past and present, both men and women. I aspire to teach, empower, and guide transformation. Let's get started. What's up, everyone? Today's video is all about tactics and specifically this idea of respect and reset. To do this, we're going to check out a few rallies from a match from 2011 between Amar Shabana and Gregory Gaultier from the Super Series Finals. The full match is available on YouTube for free, so if you have not watched it, I would highly encourage you to watch it. It is an amazing match. First things first, let's go to our coaching notes. Before we even talk about this idea of respect and reset, in case you don't already know from the previous videos, it comes down to making an effective choice when you have your opponent under pressure. And what I mean by that is the game of squash is based on patterns and is based on combinations. So let's use an example to make this as easy as we can possibly try to make it. Let's assume that I hit a backhand drop from the midcourt. I try to hit that ball into the front wall floor so that it squeezes tight against the side wall when you are about to go hit it. If I end up hitting that ball really, really tight to the side wall, chances are that you are not going to be able to hit a cross court to the right side of the court. So I'm going to step forward onto the tee and I'm going to move over to the left side on the tee because I want to follow up my tight drop. The thing is that if you end up hitting a good ball, either a nice counter drop or a nice lob down the backhand wall. And I have in my mind already pre-committed to attacking your shot, regardless of the quality of your shot, just because I hit a good shot. I'm not respecting and resetting your shot. I'm not making a choice at that point. I'm simply just going with, I hit a good shot, I'm gonna follow it up. I hit a good shot, I'm gonna follow it up. It's kind of like this, um, almost this robotic pattern. If I hit a good shot, I'm gonna volley it. It doesn't always work like that. And truthfully, I've been on the receiving end of this myself where I've hit a good shot and I have cheated a little bit and my opponent has hit a, a better shot in return and I'm totally caught out. What ends up happening is my opponent could actually counterattack me and then I'm not ready for that. They could hit something really tight and if I try to force it, I can either hit a tin or they, they end up squeezing me and I hit a loose ball and then I'm under pressure for the rest of the rally. So the thing to think about here is use the combos, use the high percentage attacks, hunt the volley, be prepared to volley, but you got to decide after your opponent hits the shot whether you are going to continue to attack and be relentless or whether you need to respect and reset their shot. And you can respect and reset the rally from anywhere. It could be from the mid court, from the front court, from the back court. If your opponent takes you short, they lob it. If the lob's too good, you let the ball go. If your opponent it takes you short and then you counter drop it and then they counter drop your drop, well, you're not gonna try to attack that again. If it's tight, you're going to reset the rally. So it can work from anywhere. Now, one thing to think about, this is more from a mindset side of things for squash. And don't worry, I'm making a video that's gonna target a little bit more of the mindset because that seems like it's an important topic for you guys and truthfully for everyone. But once you make a poor decision and all of us make poor decisions, so the first thing is no judgment. <laughs> I've made many poor decisions in my life. I'll be going backwards, leaping, trying to hit crossword nicks. And sometimes they come off and sometimes they don't. But that is not a good decision in air quotes. But when we do make poor decisions, the key is to bring ourselves back into the present moment. And the easiest way to do that is to bring yourself into your body by focusing on your breath. By focusing on your breath or whether you have some kind of physical cue, maybe you focus on putting the hand on the wall and just feeling that and now you're bringing yourself back into your body. You could feel your feet on the ground and you're bringing yourself back into the body. These are all mindfulness techniques and I'm happy to talk about this more if you guys want. Um, but by doing that, you basically reset yourself mentally and then you should try your best to focus or refocus onto the game plan. And your game plan doesn't have to be complex. It could be something as simple as hit good length, step up, look for the volley or move them from left to right or move them uh, you know like hit 
three shots deep and then one shot short. Like whatever you're trying to work on, it could be totally unique for each person. Now that we have a good setup and a good sense of some of the high level things that we're talking about here, let's jump into the videos. And I'm gonna try not to pause them too much because there are a few minutes of videos and it'll go on forever. It's starting in a second, get ready and go. So the standard stuff, players are jockeying for position, changing direction, hitting pretty good deep length, forcing their opponents to the back of the court for the most part. And check this out here. So now Shabana hit that short drop and Gaultier goes to lob that ball. Gaultier's lob is pretty good. And Shabana steps back, he's in the air a lesser player might have tried to cross court nick this or if someone was feeling very ambitious they might have tried to go a straight drop into this front right corner but what does shabana do he goes for the cross court volley drive in order to reset the rally and now check this part out so here shabana goltier actually hit a pretty tight ball so if you look at goltier's length over here he hits a good ball and then Shabana hits an equally tight length. But what we see is Goltier is going for this volley in his mind because he knows that he's set up with a pretty good length. But because Shabana's ball is glued, notice Goltier goes in for the volley and then he's like, oh crap, that ball is really tight. I'm gonna move back and I'm gonna respect that shot and I'm going to reset that rally. And then all of a sudden the players are back to jockeying and having reset the rally. And then they're back again fighting for position. Bit of a cheap attempt at a let from Shabana, but check that out. 2-2-4-4. Two, two, four, four. This is like 80 minutes into the match. So I think he just wanted a bit of a break. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next clip. Here it goes. Standard players hitting exchanging length, waiting for the opening so that they can apply some pressure and force something out of their opponent. Good change of pace, good use of height. So Shabana gets that volley in here. This is where it gets a bit interesting. So Goltier has hit something a bit short and loose. Shabana plays with a bit of a hold. He plays this nice cross court across Goltier. And then you see Goltier struggling a little bit. I mean, he's fast, he gets that ball, obviously, and he pops it up onto the front wall, and Shabana automatically knows that, hey, Goltier has used good height, he's gotten the ball deep, it's pretty tight to the wall, it's quite far away from Shabana, so what does he do? He respects it, and he just resets his length, and then the rally goes back, Shabana starts attacking, and then it continues from there. And now check this part out. Goltier counterattacked Shabana's drop, and then... Shabana defends and Goltier, what does he do? He sees that the ball is kind of coming back. It's not going to die in the back corner. So that's an assessment that he's just made. So he's letting it come back and then playing it to reset that rally. Now this rally goes on for a while, but I'm not gonna watch the rest of it with you guys. Let's jump over to the next rally. So here we go. Last rally we're gonna check out. So Shabana hits that nice cross, and you'll see Goltier ends up defending pretty well. Shabana could have volleyed that because he had Goltier under a bit of pressure, but he noticed that Goltier's shot was really tight, and Shabana is happy to go back and respect that ball. Goltier is using good height over here to try to defend it. Again, like good, crisp, clean length hitting here. And now check this one out. So Goltier plays a nice counter drop over there. Shabana comes in and plays the lob. And look at Goltier. He's moving backwards, leaping in the air, and he's going for that volley drop, and he just catches the top of the tin. So that's an example of where respect and reset was not adhered to, and Goltier resulted in a tin. So what does all of this mean? And actually, before we even get to kind of a summary I want you guys to check this out I'm gonna do a slow motion comparison of the two of the clips that you saw where Shabana lobbed it and in one case Gaultier did 
try to volley drop it short and in the other case he let the ball go back so let's check this out so in the scenario on the left Gaultier is squeezing the ball off and hits a good counter attack and in the scenario on the right he's under pressure and playing the counter drop even though the ball was a bit off the side wall in both cases Shabana is moving in to play a cross court lob and what you'll notice is in this situation Shabana is a little bit more stretched out on the left and the right Shabana is a little bit more comfortable so that's just setting the context of what we're looking at over here then if we continue we're gonna see this so when Shabana is under a bit more pressure he actually hits a slightly better lob so that's where the ball is hitting the front wall it's on top of the F uh, on top of the N on the right side Shabana hits a weaker lob it's under the N so what's gonna happen is the lob on the left is actually gonna go further back and chances are that it might die into the back of the court this one Golti is probably making the assessment that hey this ball's a little bit lower it's probably gonna hit the side wall and pop out and I can come get it before it goes to the back wall on the, in the scenario on the left he's probably thinking that if I don't get it it might die in the back and what you'll notice is Gaultier's position in both cases is relatively similar. He's a little bit late comparatively over here. He's in a, he's a bit more set over here on the left. So let's see how this plays out. So Gaultier is moving back in both cases. Now on the scenario on the left, the ball is quite high. Check that out. If you compare the two, this ball is based on our camera angle. It's almost at the service line. This ball is significantly above the service line. And this is the one where Golti is now leaping up to volley this. So if we keep going for a second, there's that leap from Golti and he's moving backwards. And like I said, he's probably wanting to volley this because if he lets it go, it probably will die in the back corner. But the critical thing here is to figure out is the drop the right shot instead could Goldie have tried to punch that ball down the wall or go for that cross court lob the way Shabana did in a previous uh, in one of the previous clips that we saw? So that's the real question over here. And Goldie obviously goes for that volley drop on the left, and then he hits the tin, and that's the end of the rally. And on the clip on the right, Goldie plays that straight drive, and that's the difference, right? Now. You can think of this in a couple of different ways. On the left clip, yeah, Goltier lost the rally, but the top professional players and, and good players in general can often make that shot. But it is a high-risk shot, but on the flip side, it has a higher reward because if that goes in perfectly like that, your opponent's probably not getting it. I uh, One, because they're not expecting it, and two, if you execute it well, it's just a really hard shot to pick up when you cut the ball and you come across it and it goes front wall into the nick, more or less. So that's something to think about. And on the right clip, by resetting it from this position and not chasing that volley and trying to attack that ball, Gaultier lives to fight another day and the rally continues. So now that we've seen the two different outcomes, I just want to go through a quick summary. You could see that when you set up your combinations, it is critical to assess the quality of the shot that your opponent has played because then you can make a choice as to whether you want to volley it or not volley it. And if you do volley it, and, and in this example we just saw on the left, you probably have to volley some of them, but then what choice are you making about the shot that you're hitting? So if you're moving backwards up in the air, do you want to try to attack that or do you want to defend that? You know, you're not always going to be set when you want to hit the ball, but then you still have a choice about what shot you want to hit. So that's the general premise about respect and reset. It's all about choice and this is a critical word i highly encourage you guys to think about choice and always remember that no matter where you are you have the choice to attack defend rally force your opponent you have the choice to lift the ball to hit it hard to hit it low to hit you know all of these variations you have choice and it's up to you to now play around with these choices 
Look at what combinations work well for you. Look at what patterns you play and what you don't play. Look at the patterns of your opponents and what combinations they use. And now start thinking about squash as a physical version of chess and think about the combinations that you can use, the combinations that your partner uses and how you can nullify some of their combinations. That's, that's the fun of the game at some point when your technique kind of becomes, uh, gets up to par essentially. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Keep liking it if you do. Keep sharing your comments. I'm loving the comments on the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I really appreciate your support and I will see you in the next video.